okay, when World War III happens, the goal is to destroy America. Okay. The Muslim Brotherhood and Obama allied with Iran, which both have declared death to America, allied with North Korea, which has been declaring death to America, allied with the whole world of Islam, which has been declaring death to America, and then with the power of the dragon, which is China, the economic power, Russia. So you got, let's do a little, let's do a little inventory real quick. You got the whole world of Islam against America. You got Obama, who spent the last eight years basically whittling away at destroying America little by little. He did it, he did it as much as he could in his first term with and being sure that he could be reelected. And then his second term, and then the last couple of months of his second term, he just he totally revealed himself as giving all that $1.7 billion to Iran. Are you serious? He should have gone to prison for that. They should have basically, they should have said, this dude is, this guy has totally gone off the, the whole nuclear deal with Iran. I mean, it should have been obvious. Obama's working with Iran. He's also working with Russia. It should have been obvious. But here's all these nations. You got the nation of Islam. Islam in general. Death to America. You got, North Korea, death to America. You got Russia, China. China's been saying death to America economically for years. They've stolen our secrets. Oh, and FYI, any technology, any recent technology that you see from Russia is American technology that was stolen by way of Edward Snowden. You don't have to believe me now. You can find that out after the resurrection. You can go to Jesus himself and say, Is that true what he said? Yeah. Edward Snowden didn't just leak NSA information. And uh, hello, you want to know who's behind all the all the um, hacking of um, emails during the election? Edward Snowden. Where does he live right now? Russia. Where was the first place he went after leaving the United States? China. What did he have with him? He had a briefcase full of hard drives. What was his job? His job was to do security, internet and cyber security for like DARPA, NORAD, <laughs> top, the Pentagon, all the top secret files, all the top secret documentation, how to build the F-35, how to build certain robotics, how to build certain missiles, stealth technology. Edward Snowden leaked all of that, and that's why, as soon as Edward Snowden, it literally took like a year, and then Russia started getting real belligerent. It actually didn't even take a year. It was like as soon as Edward Snowden went and, and we'll just say, defected with, to Russia, um, he basically went back home. When, when Edward Snowden went back home to Russia... What if I were to tell you he was sent here to do what he did? Anyway, a lot of people will, will say, well, that's not true. I don't know anything about that. I disagree. I think Edward Snowden, all he did was leak NSA information. <laughs> Sorry if you're dumb, but why do you think China, within just a few months, was able to build an F-35? And they call it the J-22. Why do you think Russia right now has all this amazing technology for their for their missile defenses and all that? Stolen. It's all stolen from the United States. Just saying. Meanwhile, so so while Russia and China were building up, building up, Obama was over here destroying us. And then in Revelation chapter 13 talks about how the first beast rises out of the sea. That's the Russian and Chinese Navy. The North Korean Navy rises out of the sea, has the feet of the bear, that's the Russian infantry, spotted like a leopard, that's all your different factions of Islam. So you got the whole world of Russia, China, North Korea, and the whole world of Islam have decided to destroy America. And they thought they were trying to get Obama to stay in control of the nukes so they could do it without having any repercussions. But Donald Trump came in and took over those nukes. 
So now everything went out of their control. Now they actually have to deal with a worldwide thermonuclear catastrophe. And that's what they're going to do. And at the end of it, they take over America. The mark of the beast comes out. But then as soon as God takes his people out, and I'm talking about as soon as the rapture happens, God's going to pour out his wrath on this earth. Anybody who's left behind is going to be under the wrath of God. Now there's 144,000 who walk in the power of the Holy Spirit and protection from God. We see that in Revelation chapter 9. We also see it in Revelation chapter, I believe it's chapter 16. Now you want to see what happens at the end of the age with the 144,000 after the rapture. I'll explain that. Get your Bible out and read Exodus chapter 8 and 9. Play, pay close attention to the plague of blood. Then read Revelation chapter 16 and Revelation chapter 9. And in Revelation chapter 16, play, pay close attention to the plague of blood. Those are going to be almost exactly the same. The plague of blood in the, in the book of Exodus happens, and the Bible says that in Egypt, Moses and Aaron went and proclaimed that God is going to turn all the waters into blood. And then... The very next day, or I can't remember exactly, like, you know, then God does it. He turns all the waters into blood. And if you read the verse, you'll find out that, that the Nile turned to blood, but also all the fresh water in any jars or vessels also turned into blood. Okay, so read that in, in, the, in the book of Exodus. It's either chapter 8 or 9, maybe 10. Then go to um, Revelation chapter 16. Now, the 144,000 have the seal of God. They're systematically put to death as martyrs over a period of 1,260 days. That's why the Bible says that the two witnesses prophesy the full 1,260 days. Some of those 144,000 last 800 days, 1,000 days, 500 days before they're put to death for their faith. But the two witnesses prophesy the full 1,260 days. Okay? Now, when the plague of blood happens, the Bible says that God forces the inhabitants of the earth to drink blood because they have shed the blood of God's prophets and saints. He's referring to God's 144,000 and all the martyrs that happened before the rapture. Okay? If you don't understand what I'm saying, just do that comparison. The two witnesses in Revelation chapter 16 will proclaim that by this time tomorrow, God is going to turn all the waters into blood. And the inhabitants of the earth will be forced to drink blood. And that's why it says they have tormented the inhabitants of the earth with their prophesying. In other words, if God just turns all the waters into blood... That they'd just be able to say, oh, well, it's kind of gross, whatever. But when you have a witness proclaiming that God is going to do this to you because you're a disobedient, rebellious group of wicked people who have shed the blood of God's prophets and saints, and now you're forced to drink blood, then there's a communication going. In other words, God is communicating to the inhabitants of the earth using the two witnesses in the same way that God communicated to Pharaoh and the people of Egypt using the two witnesses, and at that time in, Ex in the book of Exodus, it's Moses and Aaron. Now, anybody who says that Elijah and, and Moses are going to be resurrected and be walking the face of the earth, and they're the two witnesses, you're wrong. In the same way that John the Baptist was the Elijah, there's two new dudes that are going to walk in the spirit and the power of Elijah and the spirit and the power of Moses. Now, the mantle of Elijah rested on Elisha. The mantle of Elijah, believe it or not, is in the world right now. The mantle of Moses was on Elijah for miracles. That was Moses' mantle that rested on Elijah. In a, sense, in a sense, Elijah was the Moses that was to come during the time of Elijah. Just saying. Elisha took the mantle. The same mantle of revelation that rested on Daniel also rested on John. When he wrote the book of Revelation. The same mantle of lifestyle and administration that rested on Joseph. Later rested on Daniel. That's why Joseph and Daniel have very similar lives. That's why. That's what also why 
Daniel had a very similar revelation to what John had. And that's why Jesus said, or that's why, I'm sorry, that's why it's written that the spirit of Elisha, or of Elijah rests on Elisha because the mantle was transferred. And that's why Jesus said that John the Baptist is the Elijah. So at the end times, the two witnesses are not Moses and Elijah, but they come in the power and the spirit and they carry the mantle of Moses and Elijah. And that mantle is available today. There's somebody in the world, I believe the mantle of Elijah may have been on, on Reinhard Bonnke when millions and millions of people came to the Lord in Africa in 2004, 2005. I believe the mantle of, of um, Isaiah for writing books and for writing and writing and writing, later rested on Paul. Later rested on Joyce Meyer. And that's why she writes so many books. The mantles of God are still in the earth. Once somebody presses into God and receives that mantle, the mantle stays in the earth and is just transferred. That's why um, the bones of, El I believe it was Elisha, there was a man who was put in the grave of Elisha who was dead, he died, and the minute his body touched the bones of Elisha, he came back to life. That's because the mantle was still on Elisha. When he touched that body, that guy who was raised from the dead, I guarantee you when we find out his life after being raised from the dead, he went on to do works for God. God raised him from the dead. He was probably just like, he was probably a backslidden preacher. He was probably just like Jonah, who was supposed to be heading heading to Nineveh, and instead he went a different direction, ended up dying. And then they threw him in just the right grave. He came back to life after touching the bones of Elisha, and then he realized, you know what? I better just obey God and do that and fulfill that call. That he and then you know, in the same way that when when uh, Jonah was spit up from the from the belly of a whale, was spit up onto the beach, he probably had a realization. You know what? I should, probably should go to Nineveh now. Same concept. The spirit of Elijah rests on Elisha. Later, that spirit of Elijah rests on Elisha and then later rested on John the Baptist. And even Jesus says so. So at the end times, all the mantles are going to rest on the 144,000. And as each one of those 144,000 are put to death for their faith, that mantle is going to be transferred. Any mantles they have, there's the mantle of Elijah, there's the, uh, which is, uh, there's the mantle of Moses, which is miracles, the mantle of Elijah, which is to turn the hearts of the sons back to the fathers or whatever it was. It's prophesied in God's word in, in, in a prophecy over John the Baptist. The mantle of, uh, of, um, of Joseph is more than one mantle, one dreams with interpretation of dreams. Uh, Joseph also had the mantle of, um, of administration, okay? So that's a dip, those are two different mantles that Joseph had that later Daniel had those same, uh, had the same administration mantle and the same revelation mantle. And then later the, 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 re, the mantle for revelation rested on John the Baptist, or not John the Baptist, John the, the Beloved who wrote the book of Revelation. Those mantles, the mantle of, of um, Enoch is in the world. The mantle of Isaiah to, to write and write and write. Like I said, the mantle of Isaiah later rested on, on the Apostle Paul. Okay, Those mantles were all going to be dropped onto the two witnesses. So, be, so as the 144,000 are put to death systematically over a term of 1,260 days, each time one of them is put to death for their faith, one of the two witnesses will receive more power. So by the end, when the two witnesses are right, they're going to have every single mantle on them, and they're going to walk in a real high level of power, but even they are put to death for their faith at the very end. So anybody who says that, um, you know, Elijah, anybody who thinks they're Elijah and Moses, well, maybe you are, I don't know, but you can have the mantle of Elijah. It's in the world right now. Somebody has it. Somebody is operating in that mantle. Um, but it, the two witnesses are not 
Moses and Elijah, like actual Moses and Elijah. They carry the spirit and the power of Moses and Elijah, but they're two totally different guys. 